listeners and welcome to our program, our talk. Uh, joining us on the phone is a poet and novelist, Wahid Ziyadi, to talk about his novel, The Victims of the Imaginary. Wahid, welcome back on our waves. Uh, hello. Thanks so much. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. So uh, could you please tell us about this novel? Uh, my novel, The Victims of the Imaginary, are, is a uh, fiction story, fictional story. Uh, it was edited on 2012 in France, then re-edited in Algiers in 2013. But so it is uh, about life, mm -hmm. about our relation, the relationship with nature, life, God, metaphysical world. Our, so it's uh, mostly, mainly philosophical. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. It is a story of a mixed marriage between an Arab, Mahmoud, the main character. By the way, it's a character-based novel. And uh, a woman who's a Jew, Mary, uh, these characters are archetypes, so they symbolize different cultures and religions, different beliefs. So it's about a certain encounter and a, a confrontation at the same time. It's, it's a parallel of what is happening and what's happened since a long time uh, on Earth. I mean, the conflict between Arabs and Israelis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, one of the main themes of the novel, uh, The Victims of the Imaginary, is uh, the clash of civilizations. Uh, why does this theme prevail in the novel? Right, that's the, 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 the main theme, so I try to talk about it, not in a, an academic way, but just uh, as a story, as a news item story first. The first reading would let you know about a certain, uh, as I said, uh, night news item. It's about an assassination, a double murder, okay? the wife that has mm -hmm. been killed by her husband. And here is a killing of ideologies and, and certain cultures. It's not uh, re properly about human beings. See, it's about sort of killing of ideas. It's symbolic. Yeah, it's symbolic, it's highly symbolic. Uh, so I said that there are several levels of reading. You, have to, you can make... Uh, simple reading about facts, or to give them another dimension, a philosophical dimension, a sociological dimension, political, cultural. Uh, then the woman, the wife, has been murdered by his own son, and here we have to uh, trace back history of human beings, mostly the monotheistic religions. It's about Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, even names of characters are referring, are references to Islam, like Mahmoud and Mary and Isa or Joshua is cited in the novel, mm -hmm. and Fatima as well. It's the symbol of the Shi'is, uh, that branch of Islam, too. They are all living and interacting in this story uh, as the interaction between these cultures. Um, in your novel, you make reference to different uh, philosophical uh, concepts of great philosophers, such as uh, Socrates' uh, quotation, speak so that I may see you, for example, among others, like uh, Plato's Utopia. Is it because the novel itself uh, falls into the philosophical atmosphere, or is it an author's uh, preference? So, you know, it's uh, like a philosophical plot first. Those references are recalling back uh, those schools of thought that have lived through these centuries and are thousands of years. Uh, it is, first I wanted to say that the novel is a question of a human being, and I wanted the reader to feel himself in the novel because he's, he's going to feel himself first concerned, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a way to make him identify himself with characters, each character, of course. And 
the philosophical tendency was uh, a way to try to explain what is happening in our life as human beings and why that why the, about a certain absurdity of these kind of these kind of conflicts and you know I've been inspired by thinkers uh, universally known as Samuel Said who's uh, one who belongs to the tendency of neocolonialism and who said that the clash of civilizations is just a myth uh, so for him there is no real conflict between humans even though he was defending the Palestinian cause uh, contrary to um, Hamilton who was um, defending this thesis mm -hmm. that there is uh, that it is inevitable this kind of conflict is really inevitable and we have each century to wage wars and to be in confrontation with I mean between communities it, it is like uh, something necessary mm -hmm. yeah these kind of opposition between the two schools or the two mainstreams and uh, thoughts has been, I tried to reflect them in this story Mm -hmm. and, and what does the novel say about uh, this clash of civilizations? Yeah, you know, the, the, the novel is an, uh, an open reflection about that, okay? Um, I didn't pretend to bring any answer. Mm -hmm. I just tried to, to ask, to interrog interrogate myself in a philosophical way, you know. There are mm -hmm. those... Yeah, huge questions any human being has to ask himself about the substance of existence, of time, of life, of God. And uh, should we really mm, make a, a huge affair of that till the point of uh, waging wars and cre creating conflicts, political conflicts, religious conflicts? I think that it's uh, kind of... Uh, um, uh, it's kind of judgment of absurdity, a certain absurdity, a certain view that is not really as a human being. Mm -hmm. So you try to make a reflection on, on the clash of civilizations in, uh, in the novel. Right. That's a reflection that's mostly an interrogation. Yeah. So uh, the main character in the novel is uh, nicknamed uh, Uma or human. Yeah, Mahmoud then. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, humane, humane, that means just, uh, that's, uh, I said that uh, I was expecting that any r r reader would identify himself to the main character. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, um, since you wanted the reader to identify with the character human, what does the novel, your story, uh, and you as a person and an author try to tell about the human being to your readers? Yeah, I think that we have to uh, uh, value uh, m moral principles and what makes makes us true human beings. I, I mean, we have to emphasize that feeling of love and uh, to be helpful, to try to to put ourselves in those who are living bad conditions. So, see, so we have to share highly. Uh, human principles. I think that we have been created to to live in peace and see to share our cult cultures, to be in a certain intercultural relationship based on friendship. See, not mm -hmm. on hatred and any kind of um, ideologies that lead to. Uh, dramatic confrontations like the, the the crime that has been committed by Mahmoud against his wife just because they see that they, she has another vision of life and and like say see so his own son revenged and he killed him just to, to take revenge mm -hmm. because he he judged that 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 crime was uh, unfair and was about he was living a huge conflict. Their son, he was really uh, uh, 
even a, a meaner and mean fight psychological conflict, you see. That, mm. yeah. So um, are you trying to tell that the human side of the human being is not uh, as it should be in modern society? Right, yeah. In, I mean the community, the universal community itself, not only in our, I mean the Algerian society, because, uh, see, uh, the novel is a, in, on a universal plan. It is regarding the humanity and the world's mm -hmm. community. Yeah, that's from that point of view. I consider human beings from that point of view. Of course. So um, we spoke a lot about religious uh, concepts in the novel and in our interview as well. Uh, religious concepts are strongly uh, present in the novel. How far does religion affect the life of the character uh, human in your novel? Mm -hmm. Right, you know, victims, that refers to the title of the novel. We are all victims of imaginary. You know, there's a little difference between imagination, the act of imagining, and imaginary. It's about the all elements that are included in imagination, like the space, the culture, the society, the family, okay? Mm -hmm. Religions are a part of that imaginary. And unfortunately, uh, because of a certain negative view, or I mean a false uh, conception of religion, uh, that makes us, that leads to what I called as a neologism, la foi pâtie in French, that means the, 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 the pathology of faith, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I can see there are a certain person, certain tendencies are really sick and are ill, because of a certain conception of religion. Not the healthy one, of course. That's why they commit crimes, they kill women and even children just to pull for them. They are pleasing a certain God. Mm -hmm. The God that is created in their own representa mental representation. Mm -hmm. So uh, you just gave us the secret of the uh, title. Uh, so the secret, you know, uh, first, uh, any human being, in, in a certain way, to a certain extent, victim of his own imagination, right? Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Well, when we are excessively pretentious or ambitious or, you know, when we are egocentrist, we uh, focus on our ego excessively, we are victim to a certain extent. Then this, uh, I mean, this flow, this default, would be generalized uh, on the scale of the community. And we can find a whole community that is uh, affected by this state of mind and this uh, way of considering life, the universe, God, and all mm -hmm. uh, the abstract uh, concepts, you know. Yeah, you mean that the problem is not with the concept itself, but with the human, human being's belief? Right. It's how we conceive it or the mental representation, you know, that God isn't the same in our um, inner uh, being, you know. Each one, even if we belong to the same community as Muslims, each one of us has, might have his own representation of divinity. You know. Mr. Wahid Ziadi. So um, the novel was also a case study for uh, different dissertations. Uh, what were the angles studied in these uh, researchers? Yeah, the first one was done by a student in Gijal in 2016, and uh, the theme was Le Monde et les Mondes de l'Imagination dans les Victimes d'Imaginaire de Wahid Ziadi, the, the word of imagination and the mode or the way of imagination. In, mm -hmm. It was uh, mainly based on the fact of imagining. Then another one was about the characters in the victim de l'imaginaire. Uh, it was based on the psychological side of each, uh, okay. Another one was a psychocritic of the novel. So they, most uh, students mostly emphasizes the, the, the fiction and the, the psychological uh, portrait of characters. And I think uh, they did a uh, good, uh, I mean the good choice of themes because mm -hmm. it was based on this, upon this.
Uh, are there other angles of research that you may recommend for, uh, for other researchers to further study the novel? Yeah, I would like that someone would really take seriously this matter of conflict uh, civilization because, you know, I think uh, in my humble point of view that that's the, the huge problem we've, we're facing as, as human beings. We have to try to avoid or at least to minimize these kind of confrontations that lead to wars and to... To, the, uh, to tragic events that we're uh, watching on TV each day, you know. It's really sad to to get bad news each day in that any moment. And the first, I mean, the guilty, uh, really the guilty one is a human being. That mm -hmm. yeah. What's the solution that you may uh, recommend? For, uh, for authors like you, for literary people, to uh, deal with this issue of uh, clash of uh, civilizations? You know, as a, 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 a modest human being myself, I'm, 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 I myself am affected by this environment. So I don't think that there is an ideal solution, but the, the key word would be dialogue and tolerance and uh, we have to accept differences, that's it. We have to multiply meetings between different cultures. The interculturality certainly would lead to a certain intercomprehension, and this kind of interaction would let us as a human being uh, to, to, to avoid being racist or to, or to have stereotypes about each other. And I think that solution would be political first. Politicians have a lot to do. To, to build those bridges that will help communities to to mm. okay to communicate in the, the proper meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. uh, how can literature contribute to that? Uh, yeah, literature is really you know it's one of the, the, the I think that's a favorite for me for means to convey those messages of peace. Uh, so and, and it has to be a little bit uh, real and concrete. I mean, even if I use it fiction, but the message I wanted to convey to uh, my readers is uh, is realistic. You know, the the story is fictional, and I was uh, there was a waltz like a dance between fiction and reality. Fiction was just like a pretext to let. The, the reader get a view uh, 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 about his own reality. So mm -hmm. literature is a key for understanding and the learning of um, foreign languages. We have to value that too. Because, you know, that when we know foreign language, we can get easily access mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah, to other cultures and to, to understand how they think and how they behave. Now so um, a research conducted on the novel said that uh, the novel, The Victims of the Imaginary, requires a reading between the lines. Absolutely, yeah, between this was the said lines by and research. even between with the words. I'm not exaggerating. Because, mm, you know, I so? had a certain readers that I can consider as an elite. So they really, I had certain feedbacks so that they, 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 they really... Uh, evaluate and they value the, the, the work, the writing work. Uh, I think that we really we have to be aware when we read it. It's not just, as I said, a news item about a crime and a, a story of a family, an ordinary story. It's about uh, huge questions, huge philosophical questions, and the reader. As I, that was said by André Gide, lisez-moi bien, relisez-moi. So we have to reread certain mm -hmm. literary works to really get the true meaning and the profound meaning of it. Yeah. So um, now tell us about the uh, translation uh, of the novel. It is translated into Arabic, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, how does translation, uh, translation of literary works, especially that deal with issues like the one we're talking about now, which is the clash of uh, civilizations, how does translation help in transmitting the, the, this reflection on this issue and uh, trying to make it like uh, a ground for debate? 
Yeah, you know, but, but, but we're using, I, I personally, I decided to translate it into Arabic to, 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 to let more Algerian readers mm-hmm. read it, or, yeah, Arabs too, because they are, they are really interested in uh, those kind of writings. And I tried myself, it's my only fault to translate it into English and Arabic. I'm still working on that. Uh, the main aim of translation is to, uh, to to make a certain extent in reaching readers and to share that thought. I, um, I, not, I don't pretend that what I'm saying in the novel is truth, and it's all based on dream... Uh, Dreamlikes and nightmare ship, you know. Mm-hmm. It's about dreams and nightmares of Mahmoud, who was suffering from the mental illness. Mm-hmm. And that that's what made him commit the crime. And so, okay, I I return mm-hmm. back to the novel. I'm sorry, we were talking about translation. Uh, yeah, well, I, you know, since uh, certain years, uh, there are uh, huge efforts made in our country, and young people are really more and more interested in learning foreign languages. That's mm-hmm. a very good sign. I think that in maybe in a decade, in 10 or 20 years, the, the, the Algerian mentality w- would positively change because of, I mean, thanks of that, thanks to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, how do you interact with your uh, with your readers, especially uh, in terms of when when you're dealing with issues like the one we just mentioned, which is the clash of civilizations? Yeah, you, you know, uh, we do it daily uh, through media, social media, and you know, we, I share c- certain extracts of my writings, and I um, each day expecting reactions, and I get them. And sometimes we talk, we uh, even on, I mean online, uh, and we share. They they are they have a certain sense of reading. Mm-hmm. I I mean most of my readers are really aware of the depth of the writing and they react to it in a very good well, you know, because some of them are writers too. They are from different nationalities, from Tunisia, France, Morocco, and. Most of them are Algerians, of course. Wonderful. So, um, after um, this talk, uh, many listeners will be interested in the novel, The Victims of the Imaginary. Please tell us where can we find uh, this novel and your other works. Yeah, it is um, uh, in al Qubiya edition in Algiers and in uh, great numbers of libraries throughout Algeria. And uh, I can uh, offer it to my readers online as a PDF file, of course. It is for free. That's a, a, a modest gift from me. That's great. Why so? Why is it for free? Because, uh, you know, yeah, my aim is not to, 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 uh, to make money out of my things. Uh, the most essential uh, matter for me, what matters is uh, sharing ideas and thoughts mm-hmm. and feelings and how we conceive life and that's it. Uh, for me, I have another consideration, another view about mm-hmm. this. They are first, they are friends. I already said that. It is above, I, what you're saying is that your uh, aim is above making profits. Uh, to make it? Your aim is above uh, having a financial revenue out of Ab- writing. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, yeah, that's the truth, by the way. When mm-hmm. I started writing, my first aim wasn't about get, getting a certain celebrity, or that was first to share my inner being, my deep thoughts and feelings with another human being who is the reader, of course. Well, that's amazing, uh, Wahid Ziadi. <laughs> We are honored to have you with us for the second time. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, Anything you want to say now that we come to the end of our interview? Uh, First, I have to thank you for all what you're doing and still doing to promote the Algerian culture and to give uh, a way, a voice to Algerian writers. And I really appreciate that. And I'm honored to to be invited in your 
That would be our honor. We'll surely invite you again on our waves, uh, Mr. Wahid Ziadi. Let's recall that you are an Algerian uh, author and poet. Right. Thank you so much for being with Thank us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Listeners and welcome to our program, our talk. Uh, joining us on the phone is a poet and novelist, Wahid Ziadi, to talk about his novel, The Victims of the Imaginary. Wahid, welcome back on our waves. Uh, hello. Thanks so much. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. So, uh, could you please tell us about this novel? Uh, my novel, The Victims of the Imaginary, are is. Uh, fiction story, fictional story. Uh, I, it was edited on 2012 in France, then re-edited in Algiers in 2013. But so it is uh, about life, mm -hmm. about our relation, the relationship with nature, life, God, metaphysical world, our. So it's mostly, mainly philosophical. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. It is a story of a mixed marriage between an Arab, Mahmoud, the main character. By the way, it's a character-based novel. And uh, a woman who's a Jew, Mary, uh, these characters are archetypes. So they symbolize different cultures and religions, different beliefs. So it's about a certain encounter and a, a confrontation at the same time. It's, it's a parallel of what is happening and what happened since a long time uh, on Earth. I mean, the conflict between Arabs and Israelis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, one of the main themes of the novel, uh, The Victims of the Imaginary, is uh, the clash of civilizations. Uh, why does this theme prevail in the novel? Right, that's the, 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 the main theme, so I try to talk about it, not in a, an academic way, but just uh, as a story, as a news item story first. The first reading would let you know about a certain, uh, as I said, uh, night news item. It's about an assassination, a double murder, okay? The wife that has mm -hmm. been killed by her husband, and here is a killing of ideologies and, and certain cultures. It's not uh, re properly about human beings. See, it's about certain killing of ideas. It's symbolic. Yeah, it's symbolic. It's highly symbolic. Uh, so I said that there are several levels of reading. You, have to, you can make. Uh, simple reading about facts, or to give them another dimension, a philosophical dimension, a sociological dimension, political, cultural. Uh, then the woman, the wife, has been murdered by his own son, and here we have to uh, trace back history of human beings, mostly the monotheistic religions. It's about Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, even names of characters are referring, are references to Islam, like Mahmoud and Mary and Isa or Joshua, he's cited in the novel, mm -hmm. and Fatima as well. It's the symbol of the Shis, uh, that branch of Islam, too. They are all living and interacting in this story uh, as the interaction between these cultures. 
Um, in your novel, you make reference to different uh, philosophical uh, concepts of great philosophers, such as uh, Socrates' uh, quotation, speak so that I may see you, for example, among others, like uh, Plato's Utopia. Is it because the novel is 